All right, so we're back here down south. It's it's one of those days where it's really cold in the morning. It's supposed to be 70 something today, but right now it's beanie and sweatshirt weather. We're out here on Clark Hill today, and, and some of you guys have never heard of this lake, which is hard to believe when you look at the numbers. Ooh, Scott just missed one. When you look at the numbers, you're talking about a lake with almost 1,200 miles of shoreline. It is a massive compound that is just hit hard by folks from Georgia and South Carolina. I'm sure a lot of people from other states as well. But it's a lake that can hold a lot of pressure, and there are some slabs in here. We're gonna to try to get an on the morning bite here and see how we can do here on our first time ever filming on this Savannah River impoundment. Let's see how we go. Starting the day with a hammer. Hmm. Clark Seal. Just getting on the water. And that's not a bad first fish. Matter of fact, I might keep a few today for the grease. The little guy. When you when you're talking in terms of Clark's Hill, that's not a uh, not a giant fish for Clark's Hill, but it is a good eating fish. And he messed up when he when he bit my cricket. I'm using one of my favorite colors this morning. I uh, started out using one of my favorite colors. That's a monkey milk. And just like a slab stinger, that's a 32nd ounce jig head. These fish are schooled up. They're not very deep, so I don't need anything real heavy to get down real fast, but uh, they're short striking it this morning. So I'm gonna make a quick color change. Uh, got my fireballs out, and, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't have a fireball on to begin with this morning. I was just trying to see how the fish were gonna act. So definitely it's gonna be a fireball day, I can already tell. And uh, we're going to make a quick color change, put a fireball on, see, and get back out there and see if we can get some fish in the boat. And people ask me all the time, how do you go by what colors you like or what colors to try? And I'll be honest with you, that right there just kind of looks good to me. I don't know. It's a little darker profile compared to the, uh, compared to the monkey milk. Uh, same profile, but darker. You know, it's got a little bit of chartreuse in it, a little bit of black in it. We'll try that. If that don't work, then it'll tell me I probably need to change profiles of the bait. Uh, so, just a little experiment this morning. We'll get this threaded on. Just like that. And people always say, man, these fireballs are slippery. Well, yeah, they're a little slippery, but you kind of get the hang of it once you once you use them a little bit. What I generally do is just take them between my thumb, pointer, and middle finger. Hold it just like that. And just slide that hook right between my thumb and my pointer finger, and it goes right in. Put it on just like that, and that's all there is to it. Quick change. Quick change, and look where we are. A quick bait change. We're in them. And hmm. getting, some more, getting some more bites. Pretty good fish. But... Pretty nice fish. Yeah, just that quick bait change was all the difference. You know, we talked about profiles and, and things like that. I, I just think that profile was a was a bit much for them. Uh, you know, they, they would follow it and they would nip at it, but they just wouldn't eat. We went to a smaller profile and they're actually getting it in now. So there he is. Look at that. There he is. Come on, baby. Pretty nice fish. Ooh. Come in here. That's a male. That last fish we caught, get back, Charlie. You can't have him. You can have what's left after I get done with him. What a fish. Hmm, oh, this one's on, fighting. Baby. Come on, Tug baby. Oh, come ooh, on, that's a baby. Good fish. Oh. oh, Charlie, that was your fault. Oh. Charlie, I'm going to blame that one on you. You know what? You were sitting there minding your business, you know? I'm blaming that one on you. Oh, oh look at this. Now, now I'm going to say something right here. And I don't mean it towards the person making these jigs, but Eagle Claw is gonna have to do better. Is that where they're coming from? That's, yeah, that's an Eagle Claw hook. And I, I can't tell you how many times that has happened to me. And I talked to the man that's making the baits. I mean, it's obviously it's not his fault, you know, uh, because he doesn't make the hooks. He just orders the hooks and ties the baits, you know, but I mean, I can't tell you how many times that's cost me a fish. now. 
I don't know if it was like that before I cast out there or if that hook broke in that fish's mouth. But as you can see, I don't know how well you guys saw that fish, but that was a nice fish. Well, that's another good fish yeah, though. Nice fish. Another good fish. It is a nice fish. Hopefully the hook doesn't bend out on that uh, one. That, oh, that yeah. hook's not going anywhere. Different hook? That's a different hook. Well, a nice fish. Oof. You know, she's coming out of uh, Clark's Hill Lake, but she'll be going into Crisco Lake before long. <laughs> you know, just a beautiful fish. So it's, it's NCAA tournament time. Uh, it's call, college baseball time in the south. You know, obviously those are two things everybody looks forward to, but it's also spring crappie fishing. And anywhere in the south, you have, you know, that late, late freeze that comes either March or April. Uh, today is kind of a tough one. Uh, it's a tough one because we're right on the heels of another cold front, kind of like we were three weeks ago when we were down at West Point, similar situation today. So most people will be really happy with today. Scott's not so far simply because we've only caught, you know, 10 crappie, all between, you know, pound and a half, pound, two pounds. And for him, that's not enough in an hour's fishing. But for most people, that's a great day. So we're just gonna keep on them and see if we can get bit here. Uh, as Oh, it sounds like you guys heard that. That that was a bite. Uh, but at, we, we assume that as the day goes on, the bite's just gonna get better and better as it warms up. When we got to the lake this morning, it was 31 degrees. Uh, so obviously, when it was 70 two days ago, it's 31 now, it, it, it alters the bite a little bit. So we're gonna see if we can keep on them here and uh, show you what Clark Seal is all about. Let's put this one in the palm of your hand and show people what you think is a little fish out here. <laughs> Just right. for a comparison. Well, I mean, that fish is 11 inches. I've got about a nine and a half inch spread on my, that fish is about 11 inches long. And that's small for here? Yeah, that's, that's small for uh, Clark Hill. You know, it's, it's a great eating size fish. You know, not a bad fish. That dude literally bit at the boat. Yeah. Followed a long way, too. Yeah, followed a long way. Nice fish. Good fish. fish. That might be the biggest really fish nice. of the day. Mm. Yeah, he followed that a long way. Yep. Hello. Yeah, that fish right there is what Clark's Hill's known for. I don't know if he's big enough. He might be too big to go to Lake Crisco. There he mm. is. Oh, that's oh. a nice fish. That's the biggest fish of the day. That is a nice one. Uh -oh. Chris, you know, Chris and I were just talking about, I was, I was telling him, I said, man, these fish that are up shallow are the bigger fish. And uh, boy, that's a big female right there. Let's see. Test this canine Ooh, line out. Got it. Clark's Hill is known for that right there. I mean, that is a big fish. And uh, springtime fishing, these fish are starting to make their migration back to the uh, back of these creeks, you know, to their spawning flats. I think we're, right now we're in we're in 15 foot of water, and uh, the further up you go in this creek, the shallower it gets, and these fish are going to start spawning. Clark's Hill is one of the biggest lakes uh, in the southeast. At one time, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was the largest man-made impoundment east of the Mississippi River. It spans about 77,000 acres. Um, you know, springtime fishing, when the water temperatures, you know, get in the high 50s, low 60s, these fish begin to make their migration. Well, actually, they're starting to make that migration before that, but uh, today we've got 55 degree water temperatures. It was really cold this morning, uh, 29. I hit some 29 degree uh, weather coming over here. And, um, you know, just, we're in the, we're in the backs of the creek. The, these fish are, are wanting to go to the to the shallows at, at the upper ends of these creek arms and coves off the main body of water and spawn. And we're just out here, we're catching suspended fish, some in school, some, uh, th what we've noticed, the bigger females are up shallow by themselves. And uh, so now I'm just gonna run around and try to target some of those. I've caught some nice fish uh, for to eat, to keep and eat, but I'm gonna release all these big females. I ain't never caught a I'll bat. I'll tell you what though, these are fighting. They are. They're they big are fighters big. right here. Well, that's that's a nice fish. Yes, and I, I ain't never caught one that wasn't. Check her out. Mm. Mm -hmm. Big old Clark's Hill slab. Oof. That's a good one. Yep. They fight so hard. Golly. Oh, oh big old Clark's Hill slab. Get in mm. here, baby. Mm. Like a dang football. 
Check that joker out. You know, for years, Scott Williams has tried to get us to come to what he refers to as Clark's Hill Lake. And most people from Georgia do refer to it as that. Now you can also find it known as Lake Strom Thurmond, which is what the feds call it. Regardless of what anybody calls it, this is a massive compoundment. As a matter of fact, it's the third largest reservoir east of the Mississippi. It encompasses nearly 71,000 acres and more than 1,200 miles of shoreline. It's an incredible facility right here along the dam portion of the Broad, Savannah, and Little River. I guess the closest big city would be Augusta, Georgia. Uh, and it says, if you look up information like we did online between the different tourism agencies, we did find one place that told us that it is 240 miles above the mouth of the Savannah River. It's an impressive place to go fishing. Now, Williams took us here today because it's a place he's won many tournaments on the past. And there's no such thing as blowing up a place like this or spot burning. Guys, there is 1,200 miles of shoreline. As a matter of fact, there's a cove for every one of us to go and have a good time. And this is no secret amongst crappie anglers. Now, there's some massive slabs here. There's some smaller fish here. But what you will find out really quickly is there is a lot of area to roam. There are marinas everywhere, lawn tramps all over the place. There's just enough for people from all over South Carolina and Georgia to come enjoy. Now, oh, we're roughly, I would say roughly about an hour or so from the University of South Carolina. We're also about 40 minutes from an hour uh, from the University of Georgia and not much further to Clemson. If just use those as vantage points, the nearest place is Augusta. Uh, depending on where you're going to go, it could be 20 minutes from Augusta or an hour and a half. It's just a big, big lake, which means big opportunity. Now, we filmed three full episodes here today. This one right here you guys are watching took us less than an hour. Shows you how good the bite can be. Now, all of our fish today came on the same two things we always use when we're fishing for crappie down south. First, we tipped crappie fireballs, the pink and the chartreuse back and forth with each other. And then there were other times when he used the shad fire gel. Follow the technique Scott showed you today. Come out and find your favorite place to fish here on, as Scott calls it, Clark's Hill Lake. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.